would also like to invite Mrs. Holly Huber. She could please share her patient experience with us as well. Hello, my name is Holly Huber. I didn't necessarily expect to share my experience today. Um, I'm from San Diego, California, and I had stem cell treatment at Cell Medicines Clinic um, a little over two years ago. Um, and in my research process, um, I actually talked to uh, Richard Humphreys and Jason Upshaw and so many other patients. Um, I was diagnosed in November of 2008, or I'm sorry, 2004, and within 60 days of my diagnosis, I couldn't walk. I stood up one morning and fell on the floor. The neurologists in San Diego were telling me to, you know, wait. I had to wait for, you know, three and four months for an appointment. And I said, what am I supposed to do? I was active. I had a business of my own. I was independent. I was running like there's, you know, no limit to anything. And I figured if I listened to traditional medicine in the United States that I would get better. I would take the medications and move forward. That wasn't the case. Um, four years into my diagnosis, I was taking all the medications, been through them all. Um, injectable medications, Copaxin, Reba, Beta Sera, you name it, I've taken them all. Um, the last drug I was on was Tysabri, high risk drug for two years, and it stopped working. My neurologist at the time, he had been practicing medicine for 43 years, a um, very respected neurologist in San Diego, and um, I knew he couldn't honestly talk to me about stem cells, but I needed to make sure if I decided to leave the country and have stem cell treatment, and if something went horribly wrong, I would have somebody to treat me back in the United States. Going back, my longtime boyfriend um, and best friend, when I couldn't walk and I wasn't doing anything and I was kind of barricaded in my home, um, I couldn't see out of my right eye, I couldn't drive anymore, I literally could not walk out my front patio because I couldn't walk up and down stairs. Um, I didn't use a wheelchair all the time because I didn't need to leave my home because I didn't have a boss to answer to. He said, you know, let's read the data, let's go to the medical library, let's read the research papers, and that's what we did. And we spent nine months doing intensive research and finding out what are stem cells, what's the potential of stem cells, adult stem cells, and where can we go? I had nothing left. I was headed towards permanent life with a disability. Um, I needed a caregiver at one point where I was going to have to live in a convalescent home, you know, and I'm not 40 years old yet, I'm 37, and um, couldn't imagine that was my future. Where was I going to go from there? Um, nine months of research, we chose, you know, the mo what we thought was the most reputable, the clinic that would give me all the time I needed to ask the questions, to make sure I knew what I was understanding going into it. And luckily enough, my boyfriend has a background in sciences, and he, I didn't understand it. it. It was so foreign to me. He could break it down and understand it, and we went A, B, C, and D. So I went down my treatment, and um, I had a hard time getting off the plane, and we stayed for 30 days. I was there for 30 days of treatment, and I could actually walk to get on the plane. It wasn't right away. I didn't feel this miraculous, I'm cured, because I wasn't looking for a cure. It's not a cure. It's not a cure at all. Nobody's ever presented it like that. But um, within three months of me going home, all of a sudden I could work again. I could answer the phone. I had people wanting to know more. Um, some of you may have seen, I've done videos, and I post a lot of stuff online mostly because I couldn't leave my home at one point and because that was my outlet was living online on a computer. Um, I posted my real phone number and my real email address and surprisingly enough there were almost 3,000 people within that 30 days if I said I'd post good and bad. If I got taken advantage of, if I made it the worst mistake of my life, I'll tell everybody so that somebody else doesn't make that horrible decision and doesn't have all the information. Like I said, almost 3,000 people contacted me before I got home. Couldn't keep up with the phone calls. Three months later, I'm riding a bicycle again uh, 13 miles around my community. I'm driving a car again. I'm working. I'm, you know, I flew here on my own. Uh, Richard Humphrey said, you know, are you going to come to Texas? And I said, why not if I can find a plane ticket? So I'm excited to meet a lot of you that I've talked to in the past. So um, it's, I think it's the future of medicine. I'm not on any medications any longer. Um, my neurologists and my doctors in San Diego are okay with it. The hospital I go to, thank goodness they're on board and they watch my progress and they're so excited. Excited. And um, this is the future. This is the future of my medical treatment and where I'm going. And, you know, I think it's so positive for so many people that I've met along the way for spinal cord injury and autism. I've met people in person and all of a sudden to see, see a 14 year old speak and say father for their first time, you know, brought tears to my eyes. To see, you know, a woman be able to hold herself up and she couldn't stand it all before is pretty remarkable. I met Juan Carlos. Um, he was in the video earlier. And, you know, he
he was talking about showing his dogs and how he could get his kennels out of his truck. It was amazing stuff. So I know not just for MS, but for so many diseases, it's such a potential. So uh, we're all lucky to be here. And I'm so grateful for, you know, the professionals and the doctors and everybody involved in the clinic who makes this all possible. So I thank you all. Thank you.